You know, one of my favorite experiments to do is also one of the simplest. Just putting dry ice in water. Let's go ahead and do this. There's some dry ice here. It's solid carbon dioxide and it's really cold, which is why I'm going to use these gloves to handle it. Dry ice is minus 109.5 degrees Fahrenheit. But look at that. When you put the dry ice in water, you get bubbles, you get a beautiful cloud. I think everybody loves this experiment. Well, in this video, I'm actually going to talk about the cloud that you observe in the experiment. What's that cloud made of? Where does it come from? And how does it form? These are the questions I'm going to be trying to answer in this video. First, what is the cloud made of? Well, sometimes people will think this cloud is made of carbon dioxide. And while there's some carbon dioxide gas around here, the cloud itself is made of little tiny liquid droplets of water. And those little tiny liquid droplets of water get suspended in the air. As they sort of move away, they'll evaporate back into the air. These little tiny liquid droplets are sometimes called condensed water vapor. And this is the same stuff that clouds in the sky are made from. Well, a lot of people will think that water vapor in the atmosphere hits cold carbon dioxide gas on the top of the container and it condenses to form the cloud. But that's not what happens. The water in the cloud does not come from the atmosphere. Rather, it comes from the very water in the container in which the dry ice is placed. You can see this by viewing slow motion video of the experiment. Notice there are already clouds in the bubbles before they reach the surface. You can even watch the cloud filled bubbles reach the surface, burst, and release the cloud contained within. So you can see that the cloud is already formed inside the bubble before it reaches the surface. That's a clue that the water in the cloud comes from the water that's in the container and not from the atmosphere. Let's see what happens when we put dry ice in glycerol, which is a thick syrupy liquid. Now glycerol is not made of water you can still see bubbles form. And those bubbles are filled with carbon dioxide gas. But look, there aren't any clouds inside the bubbles. And if there's no clouds inside the bubbles, there's no cloud in the experiment. We still have cold carbon dioxide gas reaching the top layer here. There's still atmospheric water vapor that can reach that cold carbon dioxide gas but there's no condensation happening, there's no cloud. That certainly is some evidence that the cloud formed in this experiment does not come from atmospheric water vapor. This balance is set up to test the idea that if I place dry ice in water, the cloud that forms comes from the water in the flask. So first, we'll just go ahead and place the flask on the balance. And we notice the mass is 152.61 grams, whoops, 60, for the mass of the flask plus the water. Now I'm going to go ahead and place this piece of dry ice into the water. It's hot water. It's been heated to about 50 Celsius make the experiment go a little more quickly. Place that on the balance. We see the mass has gone up a little bit, but that's because we've added dry ice to the, the, the flask. Now as a result of the experiment, we see this cloud form, and if that cloud is coming from the water in the flask, then the mass at the end of the experiment should be less than 152 0.60 grams. We'll go ahead and let this run and see what happens. Well, 
Well, it looks like the dry ice has sublimed away. It looks like the mass has dropped by a little over a gram. And that's consistent with the idea that water in the beaker escaped and formed a cloud.